Now, the program to help you and your family get fit and stay fit with a biblical foundation without a one-size-fits-all plan. It's Faith Family Fitness with your host, Full Armor Sports and National Champion Coach, Jason Lupo. Kind of hyperactivity and why do we fidget with objects? And, you know, back uh, a long time ago before like 2017, when the fidget spinner was first released, uh, you might say, well, we never fidgeted with anything as kids, but um, that would be false. I mean, if you've ever clicked a pen, uh, you know, over and over and over, you're fidgeting, right? You know, maybe you're uh, twirling pens, um, you know, maybe you're uh, handling a stress ball at your office, all of that is fidgeting. Now, they took that concept and made it into uh, unique toys to entice kids to play with um, that then can sometimes become a distraction. But overall, there is scientific benefits to fidgeting. And so the debate herein lies, should we allow kids to to fidget in class or to fidget with toys? Um, And and the answer really is, is that, well, you're going to find out. Hang with us uh, after this brief time out, and we're going to talk about uh, everything that fidgeting does to our brain and to our focus. Hang with us when we come back. Full Armor Sports Teams has a new facility for after-school youth programs. It's located at 2380 Montebello near North Academy and Union with two pools for swim lessons and swim teams, a weight room for powerlifting, conditioning, and more. Full Armor Sports Teams is a Christ-centered and family-oriented organization bringing the youth of Colorado Springs together. For more info on after-school and homeschool programs, go to fullarmorsportsteams.com or call 719-629-SWIM. Welcome back to Faith Family Fitness on 100.7 The Word. Today's topic conversation, as you may have heard the opening, fidget toys. You know, these things became popular within the last couple of years, uh, really starting about 2016, 2017. I know that's pre-pandemic. Sometimes we forget our timelines get a little messed up over uh, what is going on uh, in kind of the timelines that we've been dealing with. And that's just kind of how it works. But uh, at the end of the day, fidget toys have become rather popular. And it started with the fidget spinner. If you don't remember those, it's that little like three prong thing you spin and kids were playing with them constantly. Um, And then it's kind of turned into there's a uh, you know, these popping bubble things that have become really popular. I know our athletes love those things. Um, they've actually become prizes that we've handed out and things like that. Um, but there's this like need for kids to continually play with something in their hands. And we could say, well, it's distracting. And sometimes we look at it and we, we go, well, yeah, that's that, that would be distracting to the kids. Now they're not focused and they're not learning. But we actually know that to a large degree, scientifically, it's the opposite. And sometimes we look at those toys and we go, well, you know, we didn't have those when we were kids and we did just fine, right? We say that about a lot of things. But at the end of the day, fidgeting with the new toys or fidgeting that we used to do is is the same. I mean, if you catch yourself tapping your foot or if you catch yourself, you know, clicking a pen incessantly, um, you know, I like to play a lot of you know, card games with friends and and poker with friends. And, you know, there's tons of people that enjoy constantly playing with the chips. I mean, you you constantly hear the chips rumble and they're, they're shuffling the chips or they're making noise with the chips. All of that is fidgeting. We used to sell stress balls. Those haven't become nearly as popular. It's changed to putty. Instead of clicking pens, now we're using fidget spinners or we're using you know, poppet toys. But the question becomes, is there really a purpose for this? And so there was a, a, a recent article published, the title of it, uh, Using Fidget Spinners to Improve On-Task Classroom Behavior for Students with ADHD. And uh, this was published in the Association for Behavior Analysis International, uh, with uh, Kathleen Asperani and David Hulock. All right. And what they found, what they found was that students 
that had trouble focusing on Clask, and and they called this on uh, on task behavior is the the title that they used. But they measured it to create a baseline, and they observed that the kids that they were studying had on task behavior ranging from twelve to fifty two percent, with a median of twenty seven percent. All right, so baseline data decreased on days two and three, and then a slight increase on day four. All right, this was all the the baseline. And then they handed these kids a spinner, fidget spinner, and then continued their study. And their study ranged from with the fidget spinner to on-task behavior from 67% to 88%. Almost an immediate effect of 45% increase in on-task behavior. 45% increase just by handing a kid a fidget spinner. And so the question becomes, well, why? I mean, if you look at the baseline, this baseline ranges from 12 to 52%. Now, if a kid is at 12% on-task that, that's pretty far off of where we're hoping that kids are at in order to learn and be productive in the classroom. It's If, if you are 12% effective in your job, you have a big problem. You know, it's like it, it almost reminds me of that, that scene from uh, Office Space where the guy goes, well, you know, on any given day, I only do about 15 minutes of actual real work. Well, that's about 12% of the day. <laughs> Actually, it's a little bit less, but you get the point in that we have a massive issue if we're only 12% effective as students or as workers. And so by just giving that individual, giving that student something to fidget with, that on-task behavior increased to 67 to 88%. Now, the challenge becomes this. We all have our own ideal environment. And our own ideal environment is really the the situation that is what those children are trying to create by utilizing these fidget toys. Now, I know that my ideal work environment is in a room with noise. Could be people talking, whatever. It's in a room with noise, not overly loud noise, but there has to be movement going on. There has to be sound going on. I don't, I would never go to work in a library. In fact, the the absence of noise is more distracting to me than the hustle and bustle of the crowd in a coffee, uh, you know, in a coffee shop somewhere. I want that environment that has movement going on around me because it actually allows me to focus more. And you might be the opposite. I I constantly have something in my hands almost all the time. I I, I play with things. I, I like playing with, you know, my pen or my ball. You know, it, it, it reminds me of Dr. House with that giant tennis ball. You know, there, there's, there's just things that allow us to focus. And so the question becomes, do we allow kids to, to utilize the stuff that's going to help them focus in the midst of the fact that that might not be the ideal learning environment for somebody else? And that really does become the challenge. So I, I think as educators in schools, even at home, right, you and your kids are working on homework can we find ways that still allow them to fidget or to play with their fidget toys that is not distracting their siblings or anybody else in the household? Obviously, you know, clicking a pen incessantly is just not going to be effective for everybody in the, the learning environment. It's going to be a distraction for some. But for that individual that's playing with it, it is not a distraction. And so we look at the research of why these kids are fidgeting and we end up realizing that 
the sensation of that fidgeting is oftentimes creating stimulation that are going to increase, all right, and, and here's where we get into the science of this, it increases norepinephrine and epinephrine, which are neurotransmitters that are going to increase focus for those individuals. And so, you know, there, there's more research. There's one study looking at stress ball use in sixth graders uh, who found that, you know, if they were using these uh, stress balls, that their attitude, their attention, their writing abilities, and their peer interactions improved. And then more significant research out of UC Davis, behavioral science professor Julie Schweitzer, uh, letting children fidget. And what they found is uh, that more overall movement in children with ADHD did help them perform cognitively demanding tasks. So the bouncing up and down in the chairs, the moving around, we've created this idea that school is this place to where you sit down, you be quiet, and you don't move. And the problem with that thinking is that, number one, it doesn't exist in the real world. I mean, when you get into a job setting, when you get into an office setting, you're allowed to move, you're allowed to fidget, you're allowed to, you know... I'm sitting right now in a, in a chair that spins. So we don't have this environment of sit still, don't move. But we, we expect that environment in the classroom. And the paradigm of, of that situation could be a problem. And maybe that we need to rethink overall how we manage classrooms in this country. You know, I've got a rule. I, I teach several classes. My rule is, look, if you need to get up, if you need to move around, that's fine. As long as you're not distracting anybody else or purposefully trying to distract anybody else, it doesn't bother me. And, and overall, at the end of the day, I have kids that move constantly, that are constantly moving, that are constantly fidgeting. And you still know that they've gathered the material that they've learned properly. They've learned what you're trying to teach because those same kids are the ones that are answering the questions, but I'm allowing them to move. Whereas I, I'm pretty sure if I didn't allow them to fidget or do what they needed to do to create their own learning environment, that, that bent up stagnation of not moving would not create or foster the same learning. And obviously, at the same time, there are kids to whom that movement is distracting, and they might have trouble learning. So, it, so it is a it is a difficult situation to to balance, right? And and as adults, we end up being able to to work in our own ideal environment. We can set up our environments that that kids can't necessarily do. Now, there's more research that just came out recently. Um, I do find this interesting. Uh, there's research that shows that uh, fidget spinners, fidget toys are actually going to help uh, with end-stage dementia. And so what they are finding is that people that have dementia and, and they're kind of in late-stage dementia, uh, the brain cells that are kind of the last to be destroyed are very basic movement cells, right? Like they control the basic movement of our hands. And we see this as, you know, kids kind of develop. The first thing that they want to do is they want to grab, they want to touch, they want to feel. I've had a beard for a long time. I, I swear every time I get around a baby, the first thing that that baby does is grab that beard and yank. Over and over and over. They, they want to feel the sensation. They see, oh, this is something new. Let me feel it. And that's why we have kids that, you know, pull at things, that pull at, you know, maybe the, uh, the tablecloth, that are pulling at clothing, um, that are constantly trying to, you know, grab something. And, and then at the same time, they're also getting that feeling and that same movement and the sensation out of their mouth. So if you find during adolescent development, one of the first things that kids do is they want to put things in their mouth. That's part of adolescent development. That's part of sensory development. And 
we have this bell curve in terms of like how the brain learns and and then kind of when it goes and we see that you know as we age and we get into that late stage dementia if if there's somebody with dementia at the end stages it could be very much so similar to how a baby would respond to different sensations or tactile objects they want to feel things that that's that's what's left and so giving them these fidget toys can actually uh, boost once again the epinephrine norepinephrine which is going to help basically stimulate the brain but it also gives them a sense of calm and anxiety and lots of studies have then been done with fidget spinners and strictly anxiety so whereas we started with the, this conversation on fidget spinners fidget toys and maybe ADHD or uh, focus and attention we also see that fidgeting is used constantly in situations where maybe somebody is anxious. Maybe somebody wants to be calmed down. And so we fidget for a variety of reasons. Many people fidget. It's, it's not just a select few kids. But oftentimes we don't even notice that we're doing it. And the more that we let kids during adolescence, during that time of uh, childhood development, play and get the feeling and the tactility of these toys, the sensation of clicking things, the sensation of, you know, pushing down the bubbles on that, you know, whatever the poppets are. And we see that, you know, different stuffed animals, they're coming out with more and more different textures. Some of these new ones uh, are like super smooth. They're not fluffy. It's a different sensation. And, and, and a lot of our athletes love these things. We see them all over the place. They bring them to practice. And so I, I constantly get a feel of what the new toy is that's selling because we see it constantly in in my line of work um but when we allow kids to just play they're going to gain hand-eye coordination they're going to gain self-regulation exploration problem-solving abilities and it's going to spark their creativity and too often times we have eliminated this idea of play in order to create an environment to where it's a little bit more stale. And at the end of the day, we're doing kids a disservice when we're not letting them just play. We're doing kids a disservice when we expect them to sit down, be quiet, and stay still for the entire day in a classroom. We have to let them, we have to find ways to create learning environments that work for all students. And I'm not going to go into too much depth as to why I believe that we've created some of these environments, but you know, I, I'm sure that you can uh, sit back and maybe contemplate that, use a little critical thinking and probably come up with uh, very similar answers to the ones that I've come up with. But uh, sometimes we, we, we try so hard to create an environment that is just stagnant in the classroom. And whether that's because, you know, the, the teacher prefers it that way or that's just the education model that we've created in this country, it, it continues to be a problem. And we see this skyrocketing amount of kids that are now on pharmaceutical drugs because they're doing what essentially they're trained to do. Like they, their bodies is, are inherently designed to move, to fidget. And because they're doing that, because that's what their body is essentially supposed to do, it's how they're, they're wired, we're now expecting to put them on pharmaceutical drugs that are going to have long-lasting effects which we could have a, a two-hour conversation on uh, ADHD medication and uh, 
the effects that it has on the brain and the effects that it has on behavior and performance and all that other stuff. Um, and, and at the end of the day, that's that's not a conversation that we're going to get to today. But uh, maybe we'll kick it down the road and, and have that conversation uh, in a couple weeks. But uh, overall, what I would say is uh, in your home, at school, let's find ways to allow kids to fidget, to increase their attention, to increase their on-task behavior by 45%. Let's find something, let's find a toy that is acceptable in the classroom, that's also acceptable to the kid, that the that the child wants to play with, and overall, at the end of the day, it's going to increase their performance. We know this. The research is there. So let's find ways to adapt instead of just creating rules to say, no, we're not allowing kids to fidget with toys anymore. We're going to take a brief time out. When we get back, we're going to uh, wrap up this uh, this segment Uh, This is Faith Family Fitness on 100.7 The Word. See you after this brief timeout. Thanks for listening to Faith Family Fitness, a presentation of Full Armor Sports Teams. Teamwork is at the core of any successful organization. At Full Armor Sports, led by national champion coach Jason Lupo, a Christ-centered approach to sports fundamentals and fitness has earned his company the respect of athletes and their parents. Full Armor Sports is committed to helping youth in our community experience growth through sports and to strive for improvement and excellence. Further, youth compete as individuals coming together with a sense of teamwork, camaraderie, and support for one another. At Full Armor Sports, the reality is achievements, failures, wins, and losses eventually fade away. But the bonds team members form through competition evolve into relationships lasting forever. Learn more at FullArmorSports.com. Welcome back to Faith Family Fitness on 100.7 The Word. We've had a very good conversation about fidget spinners and fidget toys in the classroom and how uh, it can improve focus and attention and how it might just be the, uh, the secret weapon to some of those uh, kids with ADHD and, and attention disorders that uh, can help them improve focus. We've also learned that uh, those fidget spinners may be extremely important in uh, early childhood development and also in dementia patients. And so next time uh, you see a kid fidgeting with a toy or you find yourself fidgeting with a pen, uh, stop and, and kind of think about this for a while about how or why we may fidget with the objects that we do in order to gain focus. And if you think that you're excluded from that bunch, all my crocheters and knitters out there, if you knit all the time while you're sitting in a meeting, that's called fidgeting. You're not exempt from this conversation. If you have children in El Paso County, Colorado, that need a place to call home, that need trusted adults in their corner to fight for them, check us out, Full Armor Swim and Sports Teams. You can find us at fullarmorswimteam.com. Or give us a call, 719-629-7946. Once again, 719-629-SWIM or 719-629-7946. Once again, that website is fullarmorswimteam.com. We have a wide variety of programs from uh, swim team, swim lessons, martial arts, powerlifting, and more coming soon. Uh, But we also have adult fitness classes starting up. And we were looking at really growing our impact in the endurance sports world. So hang with us. We're going to have more information coming out with that soon. But we would love to have you in our programs, have your kids in our programs. We have an excellent uh, community of families that just love each other, carry for each other. And uh, our, our kids are just fantastic in the community that they've created too, in that environment that they've created So check us out. Once again, fullarmorswimteam.com. Thank you for joining us on Faith Family Fitness. This is Faith Family Fitness on 100.7 The Word. See you next Saturday at 9 a.m. This has been Faith Family Fitness with Coach Jason Lupo of Full Armor Sports Teams of Colorado Springs. Join him at the same time next week for Faith Family Fitness on The Word 100.7.